Welcome to this session. Today we are going to discuss about the export certification for milk products. It means uh, we want to understand how the milk products are exported from India and what are the regulatory requirements. Before we get into the export certification, we should understand that India is one of the major milk producer in the world. But as far as our domestic consumption of milk is produced, we are the largest consumer of the milk also. So as such raw milk is not uh, exported from India and the milk products are exported from India. And we, we need to understand why the milk product can be exported uh, with certification only means because the milk products are notified under EIC Act. It means that they are under mandatory quality control and inspection system. Therefore, the milk products cannot be exported from India without certification from EIC or EIAs. If we want to understand the legal basis for that, the export of milk products was notified by the government of India by order number 2719 and notification number SO2720 both dated 28 November 2000. And these notifications were made under Export Quality Control and Inspection Act 1963. Therefore, while these notification, Government of India made it compulsory that any milk product if it is to be exported from India, it should be certified by the EIC, EIA for its quality and safety aspects. In any case, if the milk is exported, the meeting the requirements is the primary responsibility of the exporters. And when the exporter want to export the milk products, what are the requirements he need to ensure is the meeting the health requirements of the importing country. Because once a product is to be exported, the requirements of the importing country are primarily required to be ensured. And the second requirement is the requirements specified in the Government of India notification. In the previous slide, we discussed about the two notification. One is the principal order, which specified that the product has been brought under compulsory inspection and certification. And the second notification specify the rules for export of milk product. So these rules specify the requirements in terms of quality and safety which are required to be met in terms of the milk products. So the requirement of the importing country as well as the requirements given in the government of India notifications are to be met if any exporter want to export the milk product. And what role EIC plays when the export of the milk product is to be done? The EIC exercise the official control by approving the units. So there is a system to approve the units if a unit want to export the milk product from India. And to ensure that the milk products which are going from India, EIC implement an effective surveillance system to ensure compliance to the requirement of government of India notification as well as the importing country requirement. If we want to understand the current scenario of export of dairy products or milk products from India, currently there are around 100 milk plants which are approved by EIC EIA for export of milk products. And the major products which are exported are SMP skim milk powder, WMP, lactose, casein, ghee, cheese, butter, etc. And if we see in terms of market, export of milk products is going to more than 100 countries including USA, Japan, Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, Dubai, UAE, South Korea, etc. So there is a wide market of milk products from India to all around the world. And what are the quality and food safety features? Uh, which are required to be met in terms of export of milk product. First thing is the control over the primary production because currently the whole supply chain approach for safety of the product is getting driver stage day by day. Every country is putting emphasis that the safety should ensure throughout the food chain. Therefore, primary production becomes very important aspect to control the safety and quality requirement. 
GHP, GMP, HACCP based on check system, traceability of raw milk, permitted chemicals, system for tracing all raw materials and finished product. It means that whatever the products are used or finished product they are traceable. It means traceability mechanism is available in the system from where the raw material has come and where it has gone. So that in case of any known compliance we can easily find out where was the problem. Personal hygiene need to be ensured, maintain employee health check cards and now we would like to understand what are the infrastructure requirement for plant approval. It means that when exporter want to get its plant approved for the export of milk products, what are the things should be available in its plant or processing plant before approaching the EIC IA for seeking the appro approval. Adequate space for equipment, installation and storage of materials. Separation of operation to avoid cross contamination means all the operations should be duly separated so that contamination in one operation area is not transferred to other operation area. External walls, roofs, doors, window shall be water resistance and insect resistance means they should not be prone to the corrosion and they should not allow the entry of the insect pests. Internal walls, floor shall be smooth and easily cleanable means there should not be crevices in the walls and floors which allow accumulation of microorganisms and the floors and walls should be easily cleanable. Adequate lighting and ventilation, it means the processing plant should have the proper lighting depending of the area of operation where the what quantity of light is required and proper aeration also in terms of ventilation. Protection against the pest is also to be ensured in each area of the operations. Control of over the primary production, as we already discussed the primary production is a major aspect means it is a very important step to ensure that the, uh, the final product we are getting is safe. So there need to be have adequate measures to protect raw milk production against any contamination this all need to be ensured by the uh, plant. Measures to control the contamination arising from the air, soil, water, feed, fertilizer, veterinary medicinal products and biocides and the proper storage. So proper mechanism and system need to be placed to control the contamination through these sources. Control to prevent the use of prohibited antibiotic, pharmacological substances and chemicals means there should be a proper system in the plant that they are aware what are the substances which are not allowed in the milk products so that there is no final rejection of the products. And these, these mechanism or these lists need to be updated from time to time based on the recommendation of government of India or the importing country. Because in case of export the importing country requirement is very important. So these lists need to be updated from time to time and the capacity ability of the building of the staff who are involved in such activity need to be done frequently. Measures relating to animal health and welfare that have implications for human health also need to be ensured. Means we, we need to uh, aware about the animal health and welfare requirements of the importing country as well as the national requirements. Once a plant or the establishment has understood what are the requirements for exporting of milk products from India to the other country they also need to understand the what are the basic document required if they want to apply to EICIA for seeking the approval of their unit. First thing is the HSCCP manual hazard analysis and critical control point which is a very important system seven principle based approach or preventive approach to ensure the food safety. So, Every unit need to have a HSCCP manual. Test report in respect of water complying with EC directive, European Commission directive number 98-83-EC dated uh, 3rd November 1998 or 
Indian standard IS4251 used during the processing activity. So, in terms of these EC directive or Indian standards test report of water which is to be used in the plant should be available for seeking the approval. Location and the layout plan of the establishment should be there. Layout showing the process or product flow, personnel flow, water flow and affluent flow in evidence of meeting food safety requirements. Means the layout should clearly spell out how the process is going to move, how the products will be moving from one section to another section, how will be the movement of resources or the personnel in the plant and water flow. So, all these need to be specifically indicated in the layout and these should be as per the food safety requirements of the importing country. Legal identity of the applicant establishment means legal document which establish the identity uh, should be one of the requirement and the scope of the operations means the scope of the plant means what are the products they are going to manufacture or export from that unit need to be specifically indicated in documentation form. FSSAI licensing means they need to have a proper license from Food Safety and Standards Authority of India for manufacturing these milk products is one of the requirement. List of identified farms, chilling centers and milk production holdings from which the establishment intend to procure milk. It means the raw material suppliers, the proper list required to be supplied at the time of seeking approval. Biodata of the veterinarian or technologist means the internal officer who will be ensuring the food safety and quality requirement, the biodata of that particular officer need to enclose with the application form. Consent letter issued by the pollution control board means uh, pollution is under control, check the, and that type of certification should be available copy of the order allotting importer exporter code IEC code because this is uh, the primary requirement because a exporter cannot export any item unless until he has been issued a IEC code by the DCFT. Procedure for approval of the establishment once an exporter or establishment has satisfied itself that they, they meet all the requirements they have all the infrastructure in place for seeking uh, approval of their unit for export of milk products, they will apply in a proper application form to the concerned EIA which is nearest to them as per their convenience and they will apply application for approval along with the supporting documents which have been explained in the previous slides. Once the application has been received at EIA, the EIA will give the acknowledgement and carry out the desk audit scrutiny of, of the application by EIA officers. So, in desk audit they will see that all the documentary requirements have been fulfilled and in case there is any discrepancy or deficiency the EIA office will communicate to the unit that these are the document required and may short clarification or supplementary documents. Once it has been ensured that the documents are complete, uh, the assessment of the establishment by interdepartmental panel IDP, it is an expert panel of different organization is constituted for assessment of infrastructure and equipment facilities and implementation of good hygienic practices, good manufacturing practices and food safety management system based. HSCCP or procedures of the establishment. So, this IDP panel team will visit the establishment based on the mutual convenience again the date and time will be decided. The team will visit the plant and once the team is satisfied they will IDP team will recommend for approval of the unit by the EIA. Based on the recommendation of the IDP team an approval letter is issued to the establishment and a certificate of approval is issued to the establishment. For approved establishment, the control is ex exercised by the competent authority means EIC through EIAs exercise the official control to ensure that these approved establishment are ensuring the compliance to the requirements on regular basis. So, for these purposes monitoring visits are carried out by assistant director or technical officer to ensure that implementation of regulatory requirements of the 
importing country are met. And these uh, monitoring visits are carried out for facility checks, maintenance, verification of the sanitary and hygienic condition prevalent at all section of the unit, verification of HSCCP implementation, verification of the testing and lab practices. It means that the internal testing and sampling is carried out as per the requirement, verification of the internal records means whether proper records are being maintained for each and all activities which are being done in the establishment. Over and above the monitoring visits, supervisory visits are carried out by the deputy director or above level officer of the concerned EIA and the objective of carrying out the supervisory visit is for checking the documentation and compliance requirements of government of India notification or the requirements of the importing country the quality of monitoring carry out by the monitoring officer. So, it means the in supervisory visits one of the objective is to ensure uh, whether the quality of monitoring officer is proper or not. The third layer of the surveillance or monitoring is the corporate audit and the objective is to ensure that uniform implementation of rule and regulation issued by the competent authority. This corporate audit uh, act, act as a uh, check to ensure that there the implementation of the policy is harmonized throughout all the EIAs. Under this corporate audit examination of the records of the processor maintained by EIA like reports of the visit, lab reports, approval and renewal of approval are examined and uh, on sampling basis visit by the audit team to at least 5 percent of the approved establishments are also carried out under the corporate audit. As per the importing country requirements, residue monitoring plan is also requirement for the milk products and the objective of residue monitoring plan is detection of the illegal treatments, abuse of substances in the production of food, compliance with the maximum residue limits MRL for veterinary drugs, pesticides and other pharmacologically active substances and the maximum limits for heavy metals and other environmental contaminants in the foods and these, uh, these heavy metals and contaminants limits could be different for different countries. So, importing country requirements need to be seen to ensure the compliance to their requirements. To communicate and carry out follow up action in the event of detection of uh, illegal treatment of pharmacologically active substances or the detection of residue higher than the acceptable residue limits in food of animal origin. So, this residue monitoring plan is approved by the EIC in consultation with the importing country primarily EU is having such requirements and based on the approved residue monitoring plan samples are drawn and their results are shared with the importing country. In addition to the, this uh, residue monitoring plan as per the importing country uh, requirement, self RMP is also implemented by the food business operator in case of milk products establishments. And the objective of self residue monitoring plan is, is to check for residue of chemical contaminants, pesticide residue for pesticides residue checking is done once in 3 months for heavy metals primarily cadmium, arsenic and lead once in 2 months and all once in 3 months. For drugs the frequency is total residue of antibiotic as beta lactam once in a month, for aflatoxin as aflatoxin M1 once in 2 months. So, these frequency have been defined for milk products. For each unit which has uh, got the certificate of approval from EIC the validity of certificate of approval is 2 years and it need to be renewed. So, again they have to apply the concerned EIA for seeking the renewal of their certificate of approval. Approved establishment can also export their milk products through merchant exporter, but for this they need to seek a prior approval from the EIA. Marking of approval number on export packages is mandatory. So, establishment is approved they are provided with the approval number in their certificate of approval. That approval number need to be printed on every export package of the milk product and Q mark also to be printed on the export packages.
export certification as a part of compliance to the safety and quality requirement, EIEs issue the export certification for milk product and give a certification in terms of product safety, residue control and animal disease controls. So, attestation in these aspects are given in the certification. The health certificates are issued on a secured stationery with safety features. And sometimes the format of the health certificates vary from country to country because the attestation required in the health certificate may be different for different country. The signatures of the certifying officers are circulated to the uh, importing country and uh, along with their stamp so that importing country are in a position to verify that the certificate are authentic and signed by the EIC EIA officer only. The provisions for the post verification are also available. So, in case of any doubt by the importing country, they can seek clarification whether it is a certificate issued by the EIC or EIAs. And uh, in case of milk product, e certification has also been introduced, and health certificate for milk product can be issued electronically also. For milk products, EIC is having a complaint uh, handling mechanism in place and complaint handling mechanism is uh, more or less same which is applicable to all the commodities which are under mandatory uh, inspection and certification. And these complaints could come from importing country or it could be identified during monitoring or supervisory visits from testing labs means non-compliant of the product or RMP failures. So, these are some of the sources of the complaint, but once the complaint is received un, uh, under this complaint handling mechanism, the unit is put on alert and a process is taken by the EIA uh, to find out the root cause analysis to, to ensure that, that there is no reoccurrence of the same known compliance. So, through this procedure we are in a position to understand that there is a duly laid down regulatory mechanism in place for milk and milk products and the exporters are required to ensure the standards and specification defined in the government of India notification as well as the importing country requirements. So, it is the responsibility of the exporter to ensure that the requirements given are satisfied because any, any non-compliance will uh, cost a lot to the exporter and will bring name to the country. So, all the exporters should ensure that they are meeting, uh, if they wish to export the milk product, they ensure the requirement given in the EIC Act and regulations made there under. Thank you.